This keyboard is a Real Force RGB which was provided to me by Topra to review. When Topra decided to bring this keyboard to the market, it makes you realize, hey, they listen to the market. When you look at this keyboard compared to their other offerings, you need to think, did they listen to the right parts of the market? I know they listened to the mainstream market because they added RGB and it's full size. I know they listened to the enthusiast market because they made MX compatible keycap sliders. To gauge this keyboard for what it is and what it can be, I'll be doing two reviews. This first review, this video, will cover the RealForce RGB as it is out of the box. My next review will be after modding this keyboard like an enthusiast might. The teardown of this keyboard where I open it up will be in the second review. This keyboard came into the market without a real marketing presence for gamers and with highly suspicious eyes from the enthusiast community. From the perspective of the enthusiast, I ask, how did this keyboard do? After opening the box, I was greeted by the keyboard and a nice little sheet giving me some details about the keyboard, as well as a link to download the software. While not small and portable, this is a pretty nice detailed sheet about the keyboard's features. This RealForce RGB is a full-size keyboard with a standard ANSI layout. On top of the number pad, we have four extra keys, mute, volume down, volume up, and the APC, and I'll go over the APC later. The bezel is unobtrusive, minimal, and sleek. The case has some stylized edges on the sides, which makes it a bit nicer than having a plain brick as a case. On the bottom of the keyboard, I have what can be considered great news for a Topra board and something absolutely normal for any other keyboard. This news is, Topra has learned their lesson. And there are rubber feet in each corner of the keyboard, and the pop-up feet are also coated in rubber to prevent your keyboard from sliding around. The cable is attached with three channels of choice to route it. For a keyboard with this price, I wish they gave us a detachable cable to be honest. Back on the top, the case of the keyboard doesn't seem to have the best build quality unfortunately. While the plastic doesn't feel cheap, it sounds cheap. Tapping on certain parts of the case produces a very cheap plasticky sound which you wouldn't expect on a keyboard of this price. Also. Certain sides of the keyboard are much easier to push in than the other sides. This isn't something I expected or experienced with a real force board. I didn't experience it with my RF87U, but here I find them on this keyboard, and that's a disappointment. The keycaps are a rather plain affair. While thick enough, they don't sound particularly nice combined with the sliders and the plate. They are ABS double shot keycaps with shine through so they'll allow the RGB LEDs to shine through nicely. Um, and already my keycaps are showing shine and use. I'm not too bothered since I do plan on switching the keycaps out. The keycaps do have sub legends for the function commands. F1 through 4 opens web, email, calculator, and music apps. F5 through 8 are your media controls. F9 through 12 allow you to open a favorite in your internet browser, shortcut folder PC, swap control and caps, as well as enable and disable your Windows key. Now moving on to the keys above the numpad, we have the volume controls and the APC. The APC, or actuation point changer. This was one of the selling points of this keyboard for me. Changing the actuation point changes where exactly the keyboard registers each keystroke. The tactile bump though is still in the same place. The total travel distance is around 4 millimeters on Topra keyboards. Each switch actuates at around 2.2 millimeters. On this model, there are three choices for your APC. 1.5 millimeter, 2.2 millimeter, and 3 millimeter. Topra has told me they've decided these three for different reasons. 1.5 millimeter is what they're expecting for those who are gaming to use. The shorter actuation means it should be easier to double tap and be more responsive. On their advertising, they advertise 25% faster APM. The 3 millimeter is best used for accurate typing and critical keys according to their advertising. This concept is exciting. I figured since RealForce has a variable weight keyboards, I would configure a layout to be variable actuation, modeled in the same way the variable weight is set up. Higher actuation for the keys closer to the center of the home row and cluster, and have it ease as you get farther away. I can definitely see some cool applications of the variable actuation though. Having your WASD keys be 1.5mm for responsive movement, and having some other keys be slightly higher may hopefully lead to less accidental key presses while gaming. For typing, I usually stick with a standard 2.2mm or try out my variable actuation mode. All these modes can be switched by the press of the APC button. The RGB backlighting on this keyboard is nice. While it's not as customizable as what's offered for Corsair and Razer with their in-switch RGB keyboards with their fancy scripts, 
it's still nice and gets the job done. The LEDs shine through nicely on the north side of the switch and do well to reflect off the white plate. The switches have a clear housing to help the LEDs shine brighter. Like other in-switch RGB competitors, the RealForce RGB has a 16.8 million color spectrum. You can configure per key RGB, or you can configure which color for certain effects. Pressing FN and the keys in your navigation cluster will allow you to change effects, brightness, presets, and turn on and off your RGB LEDs. I guess the last bit of physical overview is the top right of the keyboard, with the area that's just a fingerprint magnet. My advice, don't touch it. The keycap should be big enough for your fingers to press without smearing your fingerprints everywhere. Personally, I like how it looks, as long as you can keep it clean. Now let's talk about Topra's electro-capacitive switches in here. That's the real reason anyone should care about this keyboard. Let's start off with the basics. NKRO and anti-ghosting. It has a nice tactile bump, and if you haven't tried Topra before, I'd highly recommend it. The hype is real. Unlike normal mechanical switches, electrocapacitive switches are made a bit differently. Looking at this picture here, we can see all the parts that make up the switch. Unlike other Topra keyboards, the slider, or plunger, for this keyboard is different. All the sliders on this keyboard are MX compatible, allowing you to change out your keycaps to your heart's desire. Each key press is smooth. This keyboard, unfortunately, isn't a particularly quiet keyboard out of the box, and for me, that isn't that big of a deal. The smoothness of Topra is amazing. They did a great job with these sliders, and I'm pretty excited for the second review where I mod this keyboard, since I'm definitely curious to see how it sounds with some nicer keycaps and possibly some lube in this, on the sliders. Something that caught my eye on this keyboard were the stabilizers. For those who may not know, the Nova Touch, a discontinued keyboard by Cooler Master, was the first MX compatible Topra keyboard to hit the market a few years back. They made their own slider design and stabilizer design, which made me wonder, did Topra copy the stabilizer design for themselves? I'm happy to say Topra did not copy the slider design from Nova Touch. They decided to implement their own solution, which makes stabilized keys very smooth to type on. They do make some volume, but at this point having the keyboard stock, it's hard to say whether the sound of the stabilized keys is just from the stabilizers, just from the ABS keycaps, or a mix of both, which is my guess. Regardless, the stabilizers are smooth and work well. Now, typing on this keyboard. Typing on this keyboard is nice. There's no better way of saying it. It's, it's amazing but not super amazing by any stretch, uh, mostly due to the keycaps. But I mean, it makes a great typing experience. Honestly, after modding this keyboard, this keyboard might make it into its way to my keyboard rotation since it has the APC, which I like. When I type on this keyboard, it's hard for me to compare it to other Topra boards, because all the other Topra boards I have are modded and not stock, and for me, all those have been modded to my taste, and they are wonderful, amazing, exquisite. Um, they all have lube, they all have nice either GMK keycaps or thick PBT keycaps. Um, while this, it's harder to compare with because it's stock um, and they're cheap, flimsy ABS keycaps. But even with that said, it's a nice typing experience. Um, it's still Topra in the full definition of it. It's still smooth, it still has that bump, and that's what a lot of people are looking for. So, when I use this keyboard, it makes me wish Topra also made a TKL size, just like they did and have for their RF87U for their RF104. For the enthusiasts, that'd be what we're looking for right there, a TKL version. For the general public and gamers, a full size is probably what they're looking for, and it might be hard for many to swallow the bitter pill which is the keyboard's price. Retailing at $260 puts you in a much higher price bracket than the keyboards I'd consider being the competition for this keyboard. But this keyboard with its Topra switches gives a much more premium feel when typing, gaming, and just using your computer. If you want a full-size Topra keyboard with MX Canal sliders, this keyboard is for you. It's a bit easier than buying your own Topra keyboard and then either salvaging a Nova Touch or buying some third-party sliders to throw on yourself. If the idea of APC sounds pretty cool, this keyboard might be worth trying out, and in my opinion, this is the first time in history, basically, that Topra has decided to listen to the current market and make a keyboard with some requested features. MX compatible sliders, check. RGB, check. RGB software, check. APC, check. Rubber feet, check. This keyboard, like the rest of Topra's keyboard's offerings, is made in Japan. So, 
To answer my question of how did this keyboard do, I can best answer it by saying, while this keyboard is expensive, it did well for what it is. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in part two of this review where I tear it down and I start modding it. So here it is, part two of my Real Force RGB review. So what did I do to mod this keyboard? I simply looped her up and threw a new key set on her. We'll go over those mods, then I'll talk about how the keyboard is overall. The keyboard's construction is simple enough. It was a pretty easy process opening up the keyboard. You start in the bottom with one screw underneath the warranty sticker. After that, the top and bottom have clips that need to be undone to remove the top and bottom. When separating the plate and the PCB from the bottom, don't forget to disconnect the cable there. After that, you're going to have the chunk, that's the PCB switches and the plate. Under the PCB, there's going to be a lot of screws that you need to undo. Afterwards, holding both parts together, flip them over before separating them. This is done so the domes stay upright and in position on the PCB. Now all you need to do is pop up the sliders and then get, just get lubing. For reference, I lubed the slider rails on the switch housings. Like tuning you can do it on a car, lubing this keyboard is tuning and she comes alive. I didn't put too much lube on it, but it feels great and I definitely want to get back in there for more. The smooth Topra key presses felt even smoother and sound softened. If you do get this keyboard, I definitely say you should lube it up. If you want to be quieter, then hyperspheres would be a good bet. For keycaps, I grabbed some nice die subbed 1.5mm thick PPT keycaps, which were a real improvement over the stock ones. And I think it also helps maintain the look of the keyboard as well and works well with the RGBs. So I've been using this keyboard for a few weeks now and I think I want to relube it. That's just out of personal preference. I notice I like Topra when it's really well lubed and like my RF87U, this one needs more lube. Overall, my main complaint with this keyboard that it's full size. It's pretty big sitting on my desk and I value the real estate on my desk space. I wish the build quality of the plastic was better for the high price it is, I wish it came with better keycaps, and I wish it was pre-lubed. That means anyone who's thinking of getting a real force RGB and wants an enthusiast experience right away will need to be forking over more time and money to get there with lubes and keycap. Honestly, there isn't much left to say about this keyboard now that it's all said and done. It's definitely a decent keyboard, albeit a pricey one. The RGBs look good, the steel plate provides a great typing experience, it's not the quietest, and the keycaps are meh. The case feels cheap, but for a Topra keyboard, it has four feet. And this keyboard is for the person who wants to get a decently nice experience out of the box with no urge to modify or change the keyboard. Because if you want to do that, you might as well get one of the nicer other Topra keyboards.